A bride that's without spot and are blameless before God shall be preserved until the end. Many are waiting for a rapture while they fail to realize that his coming is unveiled through fire. Are you worthy to escape? And do you think that your life and art is pure so that you will be able to stand before him? We are called to endure until he comes. It is clear, 1 Thessalonians 4, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that he, we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the day of resurrection at the second coming. This is why Paul says, by the word of the Lord, he was just repeating what Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 29 at the last trump. When he comes after the tribulation. His second coming, the day of resurrection. Revelations 22, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And I come quickly, behold, my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. He's talking about his second coming. Revelation 11 verse 18, And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should give your reward to your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear your name small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. The wrath of God and the destruction of the wicked happens at the second coming, after the time of the tribulation, when we see the sign in the sun and the moon and the stars. This is what Jesus declared in Matthew 24 verse 29, which is confirmed in Isaiah 13. Because the day brings his wrath, he comes with his reward, like he says, to give to every man as he deserves. This shall be the day of the Lord. Isaiah 13, verse 6. Well, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Because after the time of the tribulation, there will be, there is not, there will be no more time to repent. Because he's coming to pour the vials of wrath and to clear the earth of the reprobates. The trumpet judgments are blown right through the tribulation and then he comes at the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet, which means we're going to go th through all the trumpet judgments. Therefore all hands will be limp, every man's heart will melt and they will be afraid. Pain, pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Talking about people will be in absolute shock. I saw the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> and it's going to happen very suddenly. The heavens will be ripped open. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he will destroy its sinners from it. This is not the tribulation. This is after the tribulation. And he again he says, For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. And I will punish the world for its evil 
and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will halt the arrogance of the proud, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more rare than fine gold, a man more than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and the day of his fierce anger. After the tribulation, because the tribulation of the trumpet judgments, the awakening of nations, like he says in Joel 2 as well, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the law on my holy mountain, and it goes in context in chapter 3, talks about the harvest of souls, the shaking of nations. I saw a vision of Jesus standing in space and he caused the entire globe to pass through a gr great sea that Christ was shaking because the harvest comes in through the shaking of nations. <clears throat> then it says in 1 Corinthians 3, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, and this is the day of his coming, the day of the Lord, the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built it there upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so by fire. Luke 21 And take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. Talks about the day of the Lord. For as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. In the prophet Malachi, we find a way of escape which is confirmed in all of the above. The day of the Lord unfolds upon us progressively and He's been purifying His bride to make us without spot or wrinkle. Then out of these cleansing fires of adversity, trial and purification, we see that we shall be released to clear His threshing floors and to trample the wicked like ashes under our feet. He's dealing with us through the painful discipline of the Father to be raised up and powerfully used of Him during the outpouring of the latter rain Pentecost, Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 3, Come and let us return to the Lord, for He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken, but He will bind us up. After two days He will revive us, and the third day He will raise us up, that we may live in His sight. And this is two days, because it's two days or two thousand years after Christ ascended to be with the Father. And he, when was Jesus resurrected? On the morning of the third day. So he declares prophetically, we are now in the morning of the third day, the, the, the day of the resurrection. Us being raised up. Let us, and, and he says, let us know, let us pursue the, to know the Lord, for his going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter for, and the former rain to the earth. Malachi 3, verse 2 and 3. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? This is why it says, Pray that you may be counted whether to escape and stand before the Son of Man. It says, But who can endure the day of his coming? For he who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, the offspring of the priests, which speaks of his Melchizedek priesthood, and purge them as gold and silver that they offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. He's talking about the purification of the bride, because we are the royal priestly bride as declared in Isaiah 61 and 1 Peter 2. The unveiling of Christ and His sudden appearing within the 
glorified bridal sons and daughters precedes the second coming, which only happens after the time of the tribulation shakings, which are designed by God to clear his threshing floors. Also, his sudden appearing within the glorified man-child company of overcomers, which is the overcoming bride, Jerusalem, temple and habitation of God by his spirit, constitutes the manifestation of the sons of God, which happens before the second coming. The sons of God must first be unveiled and they must be sent out as the Joel's army to gather the harvest. That's the context of prophecy. What Jesus said of the harvest of souls, those ordained to be saved in John 6, that of those whom the Father has given me, I shall lose none and then raise them up at the last day, at the last trumpet, at his coming. We're not getting going anywhere until the entire harvest has been gathered because we have to fulfill the Great Commission. It's our assignment. These first fruit saints shall be preserved, kept, protected and hidden in the essence of his end time glory, as Jesus said to me, which unveils the understanding of Isaiah 60 to 62, because Isaiah 60 to 62 talks about the glorification and the manifestation and the catching up of the man-child, the sons of God, the glorified bride, those who are being disciplined by the Father through what he speaks of, of the way to Zion, to sonship, through the Father's discipline in Hebrews 12. And this is why he says in Isaiah 62, I will not rest until I cause the righteousness of Zion to go forth like a blazing torch, and you'll be as a royal diadem in the hand of your God. <clears throat> These first fruit saints shall be preserved, kept... <clears throat> okay, sorry, no. I read that. These are they spoken of in Zephaniah 2, a call to repentance. Gather yourselves together. He is gather together, O undesirable nation, because we're like the cast outs. Before the decree is issued or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes you. So there's a gathering before the, the, the second coming. Like he says in Psalm 50, gather to me, my saints, who made a covenant through me, to me or with me by sacrifice. It's the life of the lay down bride. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. You have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Now Jesus said to me, I will hide you in the essence of my end time glory. They shall pass through the gates of Isaiah 60, of 26. In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. And this is the royal tribe, because Judah was the father of the royal tribe. He's speaking prophetically of the bride. He's the lion of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation we keep, which keeps the truth may enter in. Come, my people, into your chambers and shut your door behind you. Hide yourself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose, disclose the blood and will no longer, will no more cover a slain. This is the same Philadelphian gate of Revelation 3 by which the overcoming bride shall enter, which is opened by the key of David, which speaks of the heart of worship. And Christ appeared inside my spirit when he revealed that he's coming to receive his purified bride into himself, into oneness with God that constitutes the glorification and the revelation of the sons of God. Because him coming to the sons, his temple, Lord the Music will, after the purification prophesied in Malachi 3, will suddenly come to his temple. That unveils the sons of God. Because the, the sons will manifest the life of the Son. 
and then fulfill the prophecy of the glorified bodies, the immortality of the sons, and what he says in Romans 8, and it's hope that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. And I've experienced as a forerunner the glorified bodies. It's very real. To the faithful church and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy is true, who has the key of David. He opens and no man can shut, and shuts no one opens. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. You see, there's the protection. Enter your chambers. It's the bridal chamber where he becomes one with us, where he will hide us in the essence of his end-time glory. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. The same my God kept and preserved Lot and um, Noah in the ark during this storm of tribulation. Behold, I'm coming quickly. I'll force what you have, that no one might take away your crown. Now, let, notice that the bride is the overcoming bride. It becomes his habitation. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. So the bride becomes his habitation, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. This is the temple that he is coming to in inhabit, spoken of, by Malachi, the escape through fire, the purification, the escaped ones that are counted worthy. We escape in him, into him. Malachi, behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming. Malachi 4, the great day of God. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. His coming is revealed by fire. And all the proud is all who do wickedly will be stubble, and the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. Now listen to what he says to the obedient ones, those who fear God's name. But to you fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Like he says in the outpouring of Isaiah 2, his coming forth is like the morning. It's also the dawn of the new day. Like God gave me the morning star as a prophetic forerunner in 2011 to begin to declare the, the dawn of the day of the Lord upon this final generation. His coming forth is like the morning. He will rise with healing in his wings, the sun of righteousness. And you shall go out and go, grow fat like stale fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this. And this is the same as Psalm 110. Your people shall be willing in the day of your power and the womb of the morning because the Son of Righteousness is rising with healing in His wings. We have the dew of your youth, which speaks of the sons of God that is unveiled and coming forth. Joel 2 declares it's like dew spread on the mountains. The kingdom of God is revealed and advances in and through those who fear His name. We are the coming kingdom that shall crush all contrary kingdoms and Satan's Babylonian empire shall fall as with the Tower of Babel. Now understand that the coming kingdom which shall all the more be realized through the tribulation shakings and threshing of nations is clearly prophesied and confirmed in Micah 4. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of all the mountains. And mountain speaks of kingdoms. He talks about Zion, God's mountain, and shall be exalted above the hills. 
and people shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the Lord shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. <clears throat> then it goes on, he says, In that day, says the Lord, I will gather, assemble the lame, I will gather the outcast and those whom I afflicted, and will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. It's like Father said to me audibly six years ago, when I was brought before the throne, those who have submitted themselves to the way of the cross and dying to self are the ones that shall be raised as one nation under God. And then he talks about the bride, a new tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. To you shall it come, even the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. This is the bride of Christ. Now why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? For pangs has seized you like a woman in labor, be in pain and labor to bring forth a daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pains. Because this is the same birthing as Isaiah 66 and uh, Matthew 16. We're like a woman in travail. As soon as Zion travail, she brought forth a man-child. The mature sons of God. Then he says, Now, as also, as many nations have gathered against you, say, Let her be defiled, let our eye look upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand his counsel, for he will gather them like sheaves to the threshing floor. And now, this coincides with the prophesied threshing kingdom, the stone that's coming to thresh them to powder. In Daniel chapter 2. And it's the same out of the furnace of purification and affliction. We come for this purified people in the dawn of the new day. It brings in the day of the Lord. You will go forth like stalfed cows trampling the wicked. It's the threshing kingdom. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. For I will make your horn iron and I will make your hooves bronze. You shall beat in pieces many people. I will consecrate their grain to the Lord, their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. These things are what Daniel 2 is all about. And you watch while a stone, O king, was cut out of, of without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And this is the kingdom of God. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Now Matthew 24, the coming of the Son of Man, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and the moon and the stars shall be darkened, which declares the end of the, the, end of the tribulation, will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sun, sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds, of heaven with power and great glory. And now, now notice, he doesn't say in the second coming that these saints coming with him. He says he is coming and he will send out these angels with the sound of a trumpet and they shall gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. This is after the tribulation when he comes to fetch us. Second Thessalonians 1 so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy 
of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to pay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us. When? When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of of the Lord and from the glory of His power when He comes in that day. And this is the second coming, to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe. This is confirmed in 2 Peter 3. But the heavens and the earth which are preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And then he says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So his coming is revealed by fire. Like he says in 1 Corinthians 3, the day will declare it with fire. And every man's work shall be made manifest for what it is. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of, the, of God? Because, which, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Be steadfast, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Revelations 1 7 Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, every, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him.